I'm Davide Mattino. I'm an assistant professor at McMaster University in the Department of Medicine. Um, and I mainly work with, um, within the um, coagulation uh, kind of blood disease. So I take care of patients with uh, thrombosis and hemostasis issues, which of course includes patients with uh, hemophilia. And in particular, I am um, I'm working at the McMaster Hemophilia Treatment Center with uh, together with other colleagues uh, there uh, on the adult side of things. Uh, we have a lifespan clinic where we have both the pediatric and adult hematologists working together, but um, uh, I am mainly uh, in charge of the adult uh, hemophilia patient population for the Hamilton Treatment Center. Uh, the study I presented is um, uh, the cohort of patients without inhibitor uh, enrolled in the, the BASIS clinical trial. This is a phase three uh, study um, assessing the safety and efficacy of marstezumab, which is a, a new monoclonal antibody uh, targeting uh, the tissue factor pathway inhibitor with the aim of restoring thrombin generation and in the end, uh, hemostasis in patients with hemophilia. In this study, we enrolled patients with hemophilia A and B. Uh, and in particular, I presented the data on the cohort without inhibitors. And uh, these were patients with severe hemophilia A and moderately severe to severe hemophilia B. This, the BASIS trial showed um, that marstezumab is uh, this monoclonal antibody can uh, be safe and effective in reducing uh, treated bleeds in patients with hemophilia A and B. Uh, in particular, this study was designed to screen uh, the participants and enroll them in a, an observational phase for six months. They continued on their standard of care with factor concentrate um, uh, infusions for, uh, for that portion of the study. Um, patients were either regularly on prophylaxis or treated on demand. And after these first six months, they were, giving, they were given a loading dose of the mastezumab, 300 milligrams once, followed by weekly injection subcutaneously of this antibody at 150 milligrams. So they were previously treated uh, with the clotting factor concentrate intravenously, and then subcutaneously with this new monoclonal antibody. This was for 12 months. And at the end of the 12 months, they were offered the opportunity to continue in a, a long-term extension study. And I presented the results of the first uh, interim analysis of this uh, long-term extension study, in addition to the main results of the, of the active treatment phase of this clinical trial. Uh, the uh, primary analysis focused on uh, efficacy and safety. The key um, uh, efficacy measure was uh, AB ABR for treated bleeds, so annualized bleeding rate for the treated bleeds in this patient. Um, and uh, the secondary analysis uh, uh, was um, exploring the uh, total bleedings, the joint bleeds, the target joint bleeds, the spontaneous bleeds, and the quality of life. In terms of the results of the primary analysis, in terms of efficacy and safety, um, what uh, we found is that patients that were previously on demand had a significant reduction of, um, in their mean ABR after starting the treatment with uh, marstezumab. And similarly, also the cohort of patients that were previously receiving uh, clotting factor concentrate as routine prophylaxis uh, after uh, they started, uh, they've, uh, they've been on treatment with marstezumab for 12 months, they have a significant reduction in their uh, treated bleeds um, at the end of the 12 months. Uh, the secondary analysis focused on the total bleeds, the spontaneous bleeds, the joint bleeds, and the target joint bleed, as I said. And in all these areas, for the patients that were previously on demand, there was a significant reduction shown superiority of mastezumab over previous, uh, over, sorry, previous um, treatment on demand. Uh, for the patients that were previously uh, on routine prophylaxis, uh, it showed that mastezumab was non-inferior in all of this area, um, there was a numerical reduction in the ABR for all of these uh, different type of bleeds. However, it, uh, the analysis um, showed that um, uh, marstezumab is non-inferior for all of these uh, uh, type of bleeds. Um, in um, just for a, you know a few words on safety, um, the there were no uh, specific safety signals that were of concern 
uh, during the study, not even in the long-term extension study. And probably the most uh, you know, important finding is uh, that there were no uh, thromboembolic events as all the you know, so-called rebalancing therapies in hemophilia potentially have a risk of thrombosis. And um, so this was something that we really wanted to assess and see. Um, and there were no, uh, no events so far uh, with mastacinac. Um, this is important because another clinical trial with a different monoclonal antibody targeting another um, part of the same uh, molecule showed that actually uh, there were uh, important uh, effects in terms of thromboembolic events uh, using, um, you know, targeting this pathway. So it was important to also to, uh, to show that uh, marcetimab has uh, a good safety profile to be used in the hemophilia population. Uh, it's definitely important to see um, um, another analysis of the long-term extension study. Um, the, you know, it's very promising what we've seen in, the, in this first uh, interim analysis. Um, the number of patients that rolled over into the long-term extension phase at this time was um, uh, 58, if I'm correct. So we're still waiting for more patients to, to roll over into the long-term extension phase. And, um, but the, the results showed a clear trend um, towards in, continuous improvement for the patients that stayed on marstasimab. So I think it's very promising. We can't say much uh, because again, it was uh, you know, an interim analysis and, and it was the first one and it was not uh, pre-specified uh, in the protocol. It was just uh, done because of uh, regulatory uh, requirements. Um, but I think this is a very important um, um, result for mastazumab because this is what you want to see uh, for an effective product that over time patients are doing well, maybe consistently well, or they're continued, continuing to improve. And in this case, we've seen a continuous improvement for those patients that stayed on mastazumab. And also, actually, I should add that uh, this was optional for the patients, right? So. Um, uh, sort of a concerning uh, point would be if the patients don't want to switch to, sorry, roll over into an extension study. But basically, all of the patients, the vast majority of the patients that were offered the opportunity, they wanted to continue on the extension uh, study. So uh, this is also um, an indirect um, testimony that they were doing well and they wanted to continue on the same product.